guys, how's it going? Thad here with Iowa Budget RC, and uh, as you can see, I'm back with the lunchbox. And so we're going through step one here, which is hooking up the electronics and gonna get the servo centered and stuff so we can uh, start getting everything in the chassis. Uh, as far as servos go, I've got a choice of a few here. Um, got the one that came out of USA One, I've got uh, uh, Spectrum here. I've got an old Futaba and then I've got one of these brand new uh, MGs. I think I'm going to use the MG from uh, Amazon just because it's brand new. It's a new build and uh, they're 20 kilograms. Should be plenty good for uh, uh, moving these big wheels around. So I'm going to go ahead and get things plugged in here. Uh, we're using the uh, Dumbo X6. Not that we'll ever need six channels but uh, be kind of nice to uh, have extra channels for lights if we ever decide to add them or whatever on the uh, the orange body which got right over there is uh, looking pretty good now and it's gonna get a uh, uh, four light light bar on the roof because uh, uh, that's what the uh, original truck had So anyway, um, I will bring you back when I've got everything hooked up, just using a 3,800 milliamp uh, uh, nickel metal battery that uh, run in the uh, holiday buggy. And uh, yeah, so anyway. All right, so we're back, got things hooked up, got the motor hooked up. Uh, to begin with, I'm just gonna use the stock silver can. I do have a 21 turn Holmes uh, motor that I plan on putting in this thing, but uh, I think to begin with we're just going to put the stock one in and then do the upgrade later just to show the, the difference in uh, power um, So I'm gonna go ahead and get this baby turned on so It's not bound so to bind these Dumbos there's a little button right inside here you Press that until it starts flashing. And now it's bound. I heard the servo move. And you can see how much torque that little servo's got. Let's check the throttle here and make sure that works. Forward. got reverse. Took it a minute to pick up that reverse. So we got that part done. So now the servo can be mounted into the uh, chassis and with the servo saver and uh, we can move on. I like to build with my direction sheet below me and uh, so that way I can just look at the directions and the pictures and know what to do uh, from the start. So anyway. All right, guys. So before you start one of these builds, get you some little uh, little trays or something to keep uh, all your parts in. It really helps. Uh, that way you're not, you know, digging inside the bags or whatever to uh, uh, get parts out. Uh, I'm leaving the bearings in their bearing bag. I'm gonna need these here in a minute uh, after I get the steering put in the chassis. Here's the, uh, if you guys have never seen a bare uh, lunchbox or midnight pumpkin chassis, I know most of you that follow me have or have one. And so anyway, just a little tip I like to uh, give people when, uh, when they're building, just to keep things divided up and that way you know uh, what is what. And I put the bags in there, that way if I need to grab something from D or A or B or whatever, uh, it's right there. Okay, servo is ready and uh, got the servo saver on there, the ball ends, got the servo mounts on there, so it's ready to drop into the chassis. Uh, I'm gonna get the aluminum body mounts out and get those ready to mount on uh, as per step three right here. I've already got my servo mount uh, screws out with the washer so I will go ahead and grab the uh, body mount screws and uh, we will uh, get those mounted on there and get the servo put in. All 
right guys, servos mounted and got the uh, anodized aluminum blue body mounts on there and uh, those look really good. Hopefully they uh, hold up and are stronger than the uh, uh, stock plastic Tamiya ones, I'm sure they are. Um, one thing when you're building these things, uh, uh, screwdrivers are magnetic, most of them are anyway nowadays. But this is a uh, rare earth magnet that I just put towards the tip of the screwdriver just to additionally hold the screws. Um, and it really helps. Um, I learned that a long time ago and uh, uh, I don't do it very often, but when it comes to doing stuff like this, I'm very droppy when it comes to screws. So uh, it helps keep them on there. One thing I found that's uh, pretty cool about this kit is they've never changed the uh, layout of the chassis and they also, where's that on the parts tree here, they give you the mount for the uh, uh, extra servo to put in there for the uh, mechanical speed control that goes like this. And uh, they even give you the, the ball ends and the extra piece of linkage, so if you did want to do an old school build and uh, put the old style mechanical speed control in there, you can. And uh, just what reminded me of that is the next steps in the kit are to get the uh, uh, speed control and receiver and stuff mounted in there. So anyway. All right guys, got uh, the speed control in, got the receiver in, and uh, still gotta hook up the steering servo wire, but uh, the one bad thing about using these uh, Hobbywing 1060s is you pretty much have to mount the switch onto the speed control. Uh, you could mount the speed control down here, um, and it's not necessarily the length of the wire. That, I mean, you could, you could probably make it work, but the way that the speed control is designed for the switch. There's no mounting points on here. They're actually on the side. So you can't really put them down here in the original spot. That's the only downfall to using these really. Uh, some of them you can get away with like the holiday buggy uh, where you position the ESC in that. You can uh, position the switch to where it works. But uh, yeah, so anyway, coming right along. All right, guys, got uh, both bodies ready to uh, shoot some clear on and uh, waiting on decals and a uh, couple other things for the uh, like the light bar and whatever for the uh, Rolling Thunder body. Uh, the actual lunchbox body is uh, pretty much ready, um, but I want to clear over the top of the decals so. Uh, that part's got to wait until we get uh, uh, get all the decals. I got a can of clear for each of them. The uh, orange body, it looks good now, finally. But uh, it took uh, two full cans of the uh, Tamiya orange to cover that thing. And uh, it's nice and bright, and I like it. And I really like the uh, bright yellow on the, uh, the lunchbox. So anyway, just thought I'd show that. All right, well, it's time to start building the gearbox. And so we will do the gearbox and the front end in uh, the next video and uh, get all that together. Uh, I'm waiting on some uh, chrome wheels that I ordered uh, because we're not gonna use the yellow wheels um, because yellow wheels wouldn't look that great with uh, the orange body and uh, the chrome will go with both of them. So anyway, uh, we are going to call that an episode. Thanks for watching guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I know I'm enjoying building this again. Thank you, RC Elf. Uh, couldn't be doing this kind of stuff without you. And we truly appreciate that. This is awesome. Again, I uh, hope you learned a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, the best thing to do when you're building these things is just stay organized and, uh, don't lose that organization, you know, keep your parts bags separate and uh, 
Uh, keep things on the trees like this because some of it you use, some of it you don't, and it's all marked as far as uh, uh, you know what numbers you need and whatever else. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe.